everyone. I'm Leela Meadow-Connor, CEO and mother founder of Mama Film here in Wichita, Kansas. And we are so honored to be a satellite screen for the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. And we hope you've been enjoying, been enjoying all the films you've been seeing on the big screen, yay, at the Starlight Drive-In. Um, and thank you to everyone who joined us for our screening of Fire in the Mountains tonight. And we are so excited to be joined by the film's director, Ajit Pal Singh. Welcome. How are you? And where are you joining us from? Uh, thank you so much for, for doing this q and I'm, I'm, I'm very well. Um, this is the evening in India. I'm still in the office working on my next project. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, absolutely. After the first one comes the next one. So you had your big yes. premiere last night at Sundance. I mean, at virtual Sundance. What, what, what was that like for you as a filmmaker? And this is your first feature film. So this is incredible. It, it, it's actually a dream come true because um, I decided that I want to be a filmmaker in 2010 only. Like before that, I was doing a bit of everything actually. And I started writing my first screenplay, which I finished and I sent it to Sundance Screenwriters Lab. And I got into Sundance Screenwriters Lab in 2012. And I experienced this warmth and dedication for independent art from, from Sundance Institute. And I'm like, wow, when I make the film, I want to go to get into Sundance Film Festival. But it took me almost nine years from that day to, to make the film. <laughs> That's actually pretty amazing, though, because, you know, some because, you know, films take, can take a long time to get made. But the perseverance is, is really wonderful. Was it this screenplay that you sent or was it a different screenplay? Uh, it was a different screenplay. Yeah, okay. it was, was not the same screenplay. And I kept trying to make that film for almost five or six years. And then I was like, you know, sometimes just the time is not right. So let me do something else. And then I started making short films and then wrote this one. And this is the one that got made. That's so, that's so like interesting to hear. And I think filmmakers or people who want to be filmmakers need to hear that from people that it takes a while and that you do have to go through many years and many processes and, and hone your skill. And sometimes it seems like Kansas here in the middle of the USA is almost you know as far away from Hollywood as India is, you know, it's wild. So speaking of geography, the cinematography in this film is, is so incredibly beautiful. And it really, you know, the, the, it really shows the power of cinema as a way to transport us across the world. And I'm so glad that our audience is here in Wichita get to experience this on the big screen because it's, you know, those, those landscapes alone, um, not to mention the color and the beauty in the film deserve to be seen on the big screen. And as you know, I, in an email I sent to you, I was adopted from India as an infant and I haven't been back in 40 years. So there's something really spectacular for me about seeing that sort of like the homeland on the screen like that. Um, can you tell us about the inspiration for this story and also like how you came to that village in particular? Okay, so um, the inspiration came because in 2018, one of my cousin sister um, who, who died because her husband didn't take her to the hospital thinking that she's possessed by a ghost. And uh, I knew her very well and I couldn't believe it that something like that could happen to her because I, I knew that she was a very uh, rational woman. I mean, I mean, she's the first graduate from my father's side of the family, from the entire extended family. And, and I think she inspired many of us to take studies very seriously. So that's something that, that, that stayed in my mind, like, you know, like how, how could it happen? How could it happen? And uh, around the same time, my, my short film, uh, Ramat Kamas, which is in English called My Best Friend's Shoes, was doing quite well in the film festival circuit. So uh, a, a friend who is also a producer, he asked me like uh, that, let's do a feature film together. And I said, okay. So I, I narrated him the, I no, I didn't narrate him basically. And he said like, let's shoot it in Uttarakhand, the Himalayan region. And I said like, but why Uttarakhand? And he said, like, because I can control the budget there. Like, I can, I can make it cheap. I said, okay. Then we set, set it up in Uttarakhand. So I went to do the research in Uttarakhand. And, and actually, it, 
it just happened i didn't really try to do it consciously it just so happened because i was thinking so much about my cousin sister that in somewhere in my mind i was developing this idea of a woman of a progressive woman married to a very traditional man and how these two different way of thinking are going to create conflict in the family so this idea was already somewhere there and when i went to uttarakhand i saw this jagar which is which is the climax of the film this this very elaborative ritual and i was like wow this is actually the place to make this film not not punjab from where i come from so where i actually wanted it to be based and then it was basically usually what happens is uh, I, i did 5 months of research like spread out to to in in two years to understand the culture and bring the nuances into the story and when it came to location scouting usually what happens is that you have a location manager and and a team and and they shortlist the location and then you go and you finalize the location but i wanted to do it differently i wanted to select a place that has the right energy for 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 the film you know not not just like that it should look beautiful no it was very important that it has the energy that the story demands and that energy was uh, basically something about a village which is exposed to tourism and struggling to hold on to its traditional value where where the role of man and woman are going to conflict like where women are becoming man and man are like finding it difficult to deal with that situation so that was really important so that's why i asked like just give me one driver and a small car and the entire budget of the location scouting and give me two months and we traveled for a month and half and finally we found this village and in this village there are actually 25 homestays run by women and, and the tourists come there and this is a village where man they can't beat their wife like if they do something like that the entire village will come all the women will get together and they will give it back sounds like a very feminist place <laughs> yes yes so that was the energy i was looking for so did you once you found that village did it change your script at all or did had you already written it uh, as is and this was the perfect place to do this and and how hadn't had the village had a movie shot there before was this what was that like for them uh sorry village had which shot had had there been a movie ever shot in that village before what was it like for the people that lived there ah okay so uh no there no, nobody has shot a film there somebody shot a scene not in this village but on on a glacier near the village few years back but nobody had shot a film there and yeah i mean script changed a bit when one one we were in the village but those were mostly details not really the story didn't change it it it, it was literally it was literally like this that i have written this story keeping this village in mind that's really cool um yeah yeah so it's so nice to see the women in leading roles and the actors are so wonderful and chandra the character the the woman who plays her she's fantastic um so as a male writer director where did you draw inspiration from those female points of view Ah uh, yeah that's a very good question actually so i have i had written uh, one feature film screenplay two feature film screenplay and four short films before i wrote this and i always struggled to write women characters always like it was always a struggle like how do you give them depth give them layering and also make them great not good or bad you know like usually we end up making women very pure and men very like dark so i wanted to uh, write a film with women character as a central character it has been a like no i will do it one day and how it happened is basically with the uh, certain awareness about myself actually which which is like this that uh, 
it was around 3 years when i was like after or after 3 years of my marriage one day i suddenly realized that whenever my wife gives me an advice i don't take it and and the same way with my mother and my sister they give me advice and i was like ah you don't you don't know much okay and if the same advice comes from my father or my brother or a male colleague i'm like yeah you make sense and i was like who i mean i consider myself to be a an artist who is well read who is thinking who is sensitive and look like i have such deep rooted biases so then i was i started writing this story and and it's basically i'm fortunate that i'm surrounded by very strong women like my mother is a fighter my wife is a fighter my sister is also really a strong woman and i don't know how but i just come from a family where the women are really outspoken and very expressive and men are not in fact <laughs> well that really comes through in the character in the lead character so bravo to you because she's a, she is a strong woman and you can tell that she's really willing to do anything for her you know for her child even or children even if you know well whatever that takes <laughs> um yeah but you did a wonderful job because oftentimes i look at films and i think oh a man wrote and directed this but and i see that in this character she really does have a strong feminist point of view so that's really yeah. incredible um one of the things that really struck me watching this film is like in the western world you know the juxtaposition of old and new like we can relate to you know some the, the daughter on social media on her phone but it's really hard to relate to some of the ritual you know because we just don't have that in our culture here so um that's such a big central point of the film can you talk a little bit about that yeah so this ritual uh, uh, is basically is called jaga so what happens in uttarakhand is this that if 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 you have a problem in your household it can be a medical problem it can be a financial problem it can even be a problem like you're not getting a job you know so then what you do you you take some rice from home and you go to meet this priest whom they call puchhar and this puchhar will chant some uh, mantra shloka and he will throw the rice in the air and then the rice will fall on the ground and then he will study that rice he'll also get possessed by a god called bhairav he will study that rice and then he will suggest that you should do jagar uh, for this god or for this goddesses and and during this time or that time and then the family organizes this jagar and what happens in jagar is that uh, there are jagriya jagriya people who are playing the instrument and there are dangriyas dangriyas are people who start dancing uh, around the fire so the these people who are dancing around the fire they are actually possessed by god or goddesses so some some god or some goddesses enter in their body and then uh, then what happens is that the, suppose i am doing the jagar i am the one who is organizing the jagar it is my family's problem so i am the man of the house so then i will ask one of those god or goddesses about what is wrong with in in my family and what is the solution and how can i make it better okay and that god or goddesses will answer and tell you if you do this everything will be all right so this is the ritual uh, now in terms of uh, the context of my film and why it's there in the film is because my mother used to get possessed when i was a kid you know and i and i remember her going berserk and swelling and like even falling and screaming and shouting and also shouting at my father so <laughs> so i always i was always fascinated about like what really happens like what really happens like you know and 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 when you're a kid you 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 also believe that maybe the god or goddess is coming to her but then i was also a very curious kid like i i used to read a lot when i was in school so once you start reading about that earth is not flat but a sphere and and and, and the sun is not earth is not the center but sun is the center you start questioning so many other things you know like okay then 
where is the god where is the goddess is like what my mother really possessed by a goddess or something else happened to her so my own understanding is this that what happens as a woman especially in india everywhere in the world but very specifically in india in the rural india you are from a village you get married in another village you leave your friends family everybody behind and you come to a new village and so if you have troubles and problems you don't really have many people to share those to express you know to take advice from because they are all left in the in your ancestor village and and society doesn't really provide you outlet to to express your anguish in rural india so these kind of rituals what happened in these kind of rituals is that with the help of this music that is like so much like trance music you enter into another reality another realm and and then you scream and you shout and you beat people and it's all accepted so this is the way these women express their anguish their suffering you know and also take revenge from the man who has been suppressing them so for me it's like chandra is having a breakdown actually Yeah yeah and then my that leads me to my next question is like let's talk about the end of the film um and was this always the ending you had written and and if so where do you see Chandra now like how does in your mind as the writer where is she after this ah okay so yes i mean this ending came to me not in the beginning like in the beginning uh, this ritual was somewhere in the center of the film you know but as i kept writing and i as i kept doing more research on jagar it uh, one day i one day i realized that you know this i should treat this film like a piece of music you know like 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 a piece of opera in fact we are slowly slowly like you start very simple but then you keep adding more instrument more instrument more instrument and you start changing the tempo and it keeps going up and up and up and it really reaches the crescendo and pinnacle at the end so this is how i shifted this jagar at the end so where i see chandra after this incident is basically like my mother you know like you 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 go through so many problem you know that your son is not helping you your husband is not helping you your daughter is not helping you but you continue and 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 you again learn to find happiness in 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 small small things and at least her son now is walking you know and the reason i mean i cut the film where i cut where we don't know whether she is going to come back to life or not is mainly for you know i like literature and film which which makes me think like when i walk, go home i like okay what what would happen to her so that was the reason to cut it like that Yeah, it leaves it very open to interpretation, which is yes. depending on, you know, how you see that. Um yeah, and the, and seeing the sun at the end was really was was good. <laughs> that like whatever the energy that she exerted in some way helped him to to Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, I read that you your father ran a cinema and you used to sneak into watch Bollywood films. How did that influence you as a filmmaker? uh so it was not cinema paradiso i i used to sneak in uh and i used to watch films but i used to go to the cinema hall mainly to drink coffee <laughs> not really to watch films but i suppose somewhere it, it gave me a dream you know which 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 i didn't touch till very very late like um once i finished my graduation in chemistry um, i kind of figured out that science is not something that is my cup of tea even though i was a good student uh, i knew that i wanted to tell stories but i just didn't know the right medium and the mainly why i didn't know the right medium was because of the language so 
I'm from Punjab, but I grew up in Gujarat. So at home we spoke Punjabi. Outside I spoke Gujarati. I studied in school where everybody spoke Hindi in the medium school, and then I did my graduation in English medium college. So by the end of when I was in my twenties, I knew four languages, but I knew none of them really well to write. You know, otherwise probably I would have become a writer. So I kept trying many, 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 many things like poetry, trying to get, trying to become better at English, trying to become better at Hindi, but nothing really worked. And then what happened one day during a French film festival in Ahmedabad, I saw this film by uh, Chopu, 400 Blows, and that was like, wow, you you can also make films like these. Before that, I had never seen anything other than Bollywood. and and that didn't really attract me that much okay. some film really attracted me but mostly bollywood never made me feel think about making film 400 blows did it cinema is so, such a universal language in that way isn't it yeah yeah think about your your own journey with all the different languages and then how you ended up you know putting it all on screen which is really yeah yeah What so you mentioned Bollywood, and I don't. I, I think a lot of people know a little bit about. But how is Bollywood different than like American or you know independent cinema here in in the West? Ah, uh, from independent cinema in the West, it's very different. It, it it's much much more star driven, like Hollywood. Like if if you want to make a Bollywood film, the first thing that you need to have is a star. and then of course there's a song and dance you know like it's just part of your storytelling and at least earlier the song and dance were part of the story now they are ornamental like you use them as a decorative item so it it it's basically you can say it's hollywood um uh, without the reality that hollywood still manages to portray like if you watch a hollywood war movie or a hollywood movie with big stars they at least try to look real in in bollywood the first the most important part is to not to look real <laughs> yeah very different than your film <laughs> what yeah, is what yeah. is the independent cinema landscape like in india like for this film um how will will it get to like i mean in a normal non covid world um are there art house cinemas how would that work for people to see your movie uh, it's it's actually very unpredictable like like everybody thinks that i know and everybody thinks that this is this is the strategy for my independent film but it just works for this film and then it won't work for another five films then it works for three films and doesn't work for example lunchbox did very well you know uh, another film like really good film by made by avinash arun kila that did very well but then there are so many good independent film which just couldn't even recover the money so it's it's really unpredictable and uh, i'm lucky in that way that the producer also knows the reality of it so there are very few producer in india who make independent films and they all make with the knowledge that they may or they may not recover the money it, it they are also doing it for passion and love yes and that is wonderful that's what we need more of so yeah so but so for your film it's wonderful that you got the platform of sundance and that will allow people around the world to see it and hopefully distribution in the us and the europe and you know other places so That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's I, you know we yes we definitely need more investors who just believe in the art of it all. Yes. Yes. Um, so one last question for you: What you talked a little bit about you know the the Truffaut film you saw, but what are other what are a few of the other films that you recommend or that you find inspirational or a film that you just watch over and over again um, that you know you would love for audiences to know about. uh you mean in the sundance film festival or in oh, no in in your life <laughs> in your so i have uh, i'm a big fan of azgar farhadi and his his film called a separation the salesman and the past i have seen many times i'm also a huge fan of nuri bilge silan 
and uh, especially his uh, three monkeys and climate and even ujjar which were i think his first film and uh, belatar uh fateh akin so yeah i mean i watch i even watch avengers okay and star wars <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> all of it well thank you so much for joining us and um for sharing your film with our audiences here in kansas on the big screen it's so exciting um and you know I, actually my last question sorry what's your what are you yeah. working because you mentioned this at the top you're working on your next project what's coming next for you after this uh it's it's, a, it's actually a web series it's not a film it's, it's a commercial project uh like a Somebody has hired me as a director to do the web show. Yeah, web well, series. <laughs> that's exciting! Congratulations on yes, that. Yes. And, and a... that happened. That happened because of Sanna. That's fantastic. I mean, that's exactly what you know. This launching pad is and can yeah, be for yeah. you uh, for artists yeah. and filmmakers and giving them you know a career, making doing what they love yeah. you know, or what you love. Yeah. So congratulations yeah. on that. So please Thank give you. my best to all of the team and um, you know, congratulations to everyone. And we can't wait to see where this film goes and um, hopefully we'll get to meet in person one of these days. Yes, uh, if, if you ever come to India, I hope oh. you can come to India very soon. I hope Do so. Let us know. I will yeah, absolutely yeah. email you. Yes. <laughs> That's so great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a bye. nice day.